So here I am in um, uh, the Col du Petit Bernard in, um, I think I'm in France, might be Italy, but anyway. And um, yeah, so here I am. And Soslaw, what's happened is um, my engine uh, warning lights just come on on my uh, on my bike. And um, to be frank, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a big trip away without the engine warning light coming on. And um, you know that that would be a real pain in the pain in the neck because what most of us would do is probably if the bike feels all right, it's just sort of carry on and um, you know keep riding. But what you'd have is like that niggling doubt in the back of your mind uh, for the rest of your trip that there's something seriously wrong. Um, so unfortunately, this is a, a bit of a thing with my Triumph Scrambler 1200, and it happens every kind of maybe two or three months. Um, and I went through phases of taking into the dealership and getting a check, and there was, there was nothing to worry about. We reset it, and at one point they actually changed the sensor, thinking it was something to do with that. Um, but you know, it still happens every every two or three months. Um, you know, I, I think it's just a glitch. I think if you you know under certain conditions, I think that the light just just comes on. Um, but anyway, one of the things I, I did, I got sort of fed up with that, and I bought myself one of these. So um, it's uh, an OBDR, OBDR. Uh, to um, reader. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to use it um, and, uh, and I'll tell you why I bought this particular reader because there's all sorts of issues around compatibility, all that sort of stuff. So uh, I'll tell you why I bought this one. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get on with, um, you know, kind of sorting out uh, and uh, finding out what the, um, the engine warning light's all about this time. So here it is. I hope you can see uh, a little pesky fella so uh, yellow engine warning lights come on. I think it's called the um, malfunction um, indicator lights, actually, or something like that. Uh, and the ABS lights are just flashing because I'm, um, I'm not going to have a set off. So, so there, there it is. So um, this is the uh, ODB2 reader. So uh, it's really, really simple, uh, super cheap on, um, on Amazon. And I'll tell you a little bit about it in a minute. But first of all, how to use it. So I'll just turn that off a so. sec. Um, so th there's basically a, like a little computer um, terminal thing in here somewhere. There it is. Um, so basically it's like a, I don't know, 16 pin plug or something. Um, and uh, I'm going to try and do this with one hand. So it looks a bit, uh, a bit shonky on the camera, but that, that might be why. Um, so hold on. Yeah. So you just basically just plug it in. Uh, super simple. And um, basically, you can see already it's it's picking up the um, the, uh, the the bike. So if you just there's like a little menu thing. So go on ODB OBD. <laughs> um, so it's got codes found uh, one. So let's go let's go down onto codes found. Hold on, go up rather. There is okay. Right, so there's the um, there's the code uh, PO915 gear shift position uh, circuit range performance stroke performance. So um, I mean I've seen this code loads of times. It's the one that always comes up. So uh, I'm not too worried about it. So we'll press OK. Um, and then I'm going to erase codes. So erase codes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Right. So I think that should be done now. Right, so um, just been for a little spin around the car park and um, I'll show you the, uh, the, the warning lights off now. So I don't know if you can see that. Um, the ABS is flashing obviously because I'm not going. Um, so you know, basically it's worked, but I guess the, the main thing about it is um, it just gives you a bit of information. So um, it doesn't actually fix anything on the bike. Um, so if there's a fault, there's still a fault. But, but what it does is it gives you some information so you can phone a friend if you're, if you're worried or you can do what I've just done which is reset it and clearly if it is a fault as soon as I drive off it would come back on again uh, but I'm, I, I suspect it probably won't um, or you could you could phone your, your dealership and at least you've got some information um, to, to share with them so they could maybe give you some advice um, so it doesn't fix anything but it does mean that you're basically making a decision based on um, you know, position of, of knowledge and having some, some information 
So regarding why I bought this particular OBD2 uh, reader, um, basically it's to do with um, compatibility. So first of all, I didn't I didn't want one like this with a with a hand set and a, a screen. You can actually get some that are that are basically just like the little um, plugs, um, but they connect by Bluetooth to your phone, and um, you can do all of the stuff that I've just done on an app on your phone. And clearly for taking on a, a trip, that would have been uh, more compact, and I think would have been better. But that was the first kind of. Um, you know is, range of compatibility issues so you know there was like you know if you if you go online and you look at the forums and stuff like that, a lot of people who bought these devices were saying well it's supposed to work with ios but it doesn't or only work with uh, android or it won't work with android so there was a whole you couldn't get any kind of sense of which devices uh, of that type might work with with which phone and uh, you know i certainly wasn't going to you know somebody posted on a forum that they they now carry a, a little android tablet so that and i thought well i'm not i'm not doing that it's got to work uh, with my phone or not at all so I, I decided the latter and uh, actually to do away with that idea and get one with a screen built in so so this is it um, I have to say it's super light uh, it's just a circuit board and a, an LCD screen so um, it's um, you know I mean I don't mind carrying it at all it's it's pretty compact really um, and as I say it's super super light so so that was one set of compatibility issues I didn't have to worry about but probably more importantly trying to get any uh, information about what reader would work with my bike specifically uh, was nigh on impossible and uh, again you know, the forums were just full of people saying you know this is supposed to work with my bike and I bought one and it doesn't and blah 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 so um, uh, really frustrating so uh, so in the end what I did is I went on Amazon and just decided to buy the cheapest one I could find uh, so this was less than 20 quid and I'll put the um, the Amazon link in the in the description so basically my, my thinking was you know I'll take a punt on this you know I'll get a really cheap one and if it works great and if it doesn't work well it's not the not the end of the world but um, you know as luck would have it I bought it and connected it to the bike and it works absolutely fine so um, uh, I guess if you've got um, you know uh, one of the one of the modern classics from Triumph with the um, parallel twin liquid cool engines my guess would be this this uh, particular device uh, would, would almost certainly work with your bike um, as for other bikes, you know, I just I couldn't say. Um, but I guess you know, a bit like me, you know, for less than twenty quid, if you really want one of these, it's probably worth a, it's probably worth a punt. Um, and as I say, I mean, you know, how often does that happen uh, in life? Usually it's the other way around. But um, but I'm really happy to say it was dead cheap and it works. So that's it. That's my ODB2 uh, reader. That's how I use it. I hope you found that useful. Um, and I'll, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.